Hello everyone, my name is Triton Perrin and I'm here today to talk to you about uh, the book Get Strong at Endgame. Quick note, or maybe won't be so quick, but Endgame is one of those subjects that I feel is is very widely underrepresented in the Western Go community. I've, I've looked up videos for it and there are not that many videos, but I'm not really good enough to make my own video yet, so I haven't set that up. But it's, it's, a, it's a very important part of the game. Actually, in one of the books that I have about Endgame, it's called uh, 200 Endgame Problems, one of the things it talks about is that while people don't generally like Endgame, it comprises the majority of the game if you go to counting. If you played all the way out and you are, are at counting and, and calculating all the points, then end game was quite possibly half of the game that you played. And some people who consider end game to be boring, but end game is an extremely large part of Go. And so you should at the very least uh, learn the basic flow of end game which is what I think this book is really good for. Just to, to mention one more book, my favorite endgame book is um, Lee Cheng Ho's Endgame Techniques, Volume 1 and 2. It's, it's extremely well put together, and you learn more than what is in this book, but I believe you can only get it in the Smart Go Books app, or you can only get it if you speak uh, Korean or Chinese, I think. I think those are the only two versions that are available, but I'm not too sure. But something that Lee Cheng Ho says about Endgame is that if you are good at endgame, then you are a strong player. Your proficiency at endgame makes you a good player. It's a sign that you know what you're doing. So I find it really interesting that people just don't uh, enjoy endgame, or they don't feel like it's, or they feel like it's important, but they don't study it. So I thought this is a fantastic book for people who feel that way. So Get Strong at Endgame by uh, Richard Bozulich. Um, I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it, but but it's a it's a really well laid out book. It starts off with 47 or 42, 42 problems to answer the universe, 42. And they're kind of like a test. He's testing your end game to see what you currently know. And the idea behind those first problems is that you're supposed to write down your answers, or you can create like an SGF file, whatever you want to do, so that you can compare them with your answers after you finish the book. So you're not supposed to look at what the answers are in the actual book. So after you do those test problems, then you go and do um, Tesuji endgame problems, uh, which are the more exciting endgame moves that if your opponent answers wrong, maybe something will die. You know, it's, it's much more uh, what people are interested in. And then you have the counting section where you have to do a couple of problems and, and you have to count what their values are. And many people think that's the boring part, but I personally like that, but you know, to each his own, I guess. And then the the last section of the book is a uh, practical end game problems, much like the first forty two problems, I believe. Uh, they're actual problems from from what would look like a real game. So since this is primarily a problem book, uh, there's not too much theory or anything discussed. It's just you learn by doing. But what what makes this book really nice is that by the time you're done with the book and you've redone the first forty two problems, you know that you've gotten better. And lots of books, it's hard to tell if you've gotten better. You just sort of assume that you've gotten better. But it's nice to have something that actually shows you, hey, this is how you were before, and this is how you are now. So I really love the layout of the book. But there really isn't too much to talk about. So I wanted to give just one example problem, because I don't want to give away too much of uh, the book, because the only part that's technically free that anyone can check out, uh, like the first couple problems, which are the test problems. Uh, so I just wanted to go over the very first one and you can see what you're going to learn in the book. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so I've had the problem up on the screen the entire time. The idea here is that it's black to play and win the game through the best end game. So you want to take into mind double sente, which people often don't understand what it actually means. Double sente is when white and black both have a sente move in the same spot. And then there's normal sente moves, and then there's reverse sente, which just means that you're playing a move that prevents a sente move. And then there's gote at the very basic level. And so that's what you need to consider in order to get this problem right. So you should pause the video and check out the problem and try to do your best. And then we can go over it when you're done. So I'm just going to keep moving on now. So if you didn't pause the video, you're lost. All right. So as I mentioned, the first one you want to think about is double sente, a place where both players have a sente move. And that would be on the top here. If white plays g9, that's sente. If um, black plays f9, that's sente. So that's the first move you want to play as black. White will have to block and connect. 
Next, uh, you want to look at the next biggest Sente move. And the next biggest Sente move would be this move here. You could technically push in at J3, but this is the better technique. I'm not going to discuss, discuss why. You, you can learn that in the book. But um, So white has to capture these two stones. Then black can play this move, which is another, which is Sente. And then black has a Satari, which white would want to answer. And then black can play the last in-game move here, reducing one point. So that seemed like black was just in control the entire time, but that's because black played it in the correct order and black had all the end game moves. Black had all the good ones. So what's really cool about this Stegobon is that uh, we can just use the score tool and you can see that white has 14 and a half points and black has 15 points. So black wins by half a point. That's pretty cool. So now that we've seen the correct variation, Let's look at some ways that you could have possibly uh, did it wrong. So there's one thing to note here is that this move can probably be played first because it's it's a really big sente move, so it can probably be played first. But it's better um, it's better technique to play the double sente move first and then the big sente move. So just remember that. So this one pro you can probably play this one first. But let's look at some other moves that you would have possibly played first. For example, this move, we all know that this is a sente move, but the problem here is that this move is more sente. So if black follows up here and white follows up here, black is actually dead on this side, which means that black can't do that. White obviously got more points from this exchange and white's connected all throughout the center. So black's not threatening to kill anything. So that sucks. So that means that Black has to answer. And then white can just go back and answer this move. So now if we play the end game correctly from now on till the end, we should look at the points now. Score tool. White has 16 and a half. Black has 13. So black lost by three points because black played the wrong Sente move first. And playing it in the wrong order means that this move wasn't actually Sente at the time. It's only Sente if the follow-up is big enough. And in this case, the Hane at G9 was bigger because it threatens to kill the group. Which is why I said that um, you can possibly start from this corner because if white Hane is here uh, taking these two stones um would make the group alive still so it's possible that this sente move would be big enough but this one is not for sure so we found out that this hane is not the right time to play um there's also this atari which many people would have considered and i would see even at the dawn level they're playing this atari because it looks big enough uh, but the problem is here again this hane is bigger because it would kill the group uh, black can possibly take this stone because this will be Sente, but black will now have to come back here in Gote like this. And then white can protect the points here, black and Hane, and then uh, probably push first, connect, and then white gets this move. Just, just we'll go with this. Um, I didn't verify that all these moves are the biggest moves, but playing moves that seemed like the biggest moves and if we look at the score, white has 19 and a half points, whereas black has 16 points. So white wins again by three points. Huh. And so obviously this move would be really bad to play, right? Well, I have also seen this move at the Dawn level because people just do not study endgame. They do not think it's important enough to study, at least in the West. When I play on an Asi on Asian servers, I don't have that problem as much, but there are still many people who make mistakes like this. So it's the, it's the same sort of thing. White can Hane here and connect. Oh, for black connects. And then white plays this big in-game move. And then if we just continue on like this, um, black can push in here, but just connect and then this is what we have. And if we check the score one more time, white's winning by four points this time. And maybe white could have done better. But 
White didn't really have to try too hard to play really big endgame points because Black played a really small one, one that wasn't really important. So endgame is very important. As you can see, just from this small example, if Black plays the wrong move first, White wins by three points. Where if Black plays the correct variation, Black wins by half a point. So that's 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 really interesting, I thought. When I was learning in-game, I thought that was like, wow, that that really sucks. You know, you don't want to lose because you played the wrong in-game move when you could have just won. So there, there's been many times where I play a, a weaker player and maybe I do end up in a bad situation early on, but I don't actually have to worry about it because I know... I usually, usually if I'm playing a weaker player, I know that I know them, they're a friend, and I know whether or not they've studied in game. And if they haven't studied in game, then I'm just going to win because I'm not going to be way behind or anything. But like if I'm playing more of a teaching game, I'm just going to win in the end game and leave opportunities earlier on so that I can test them. You know, end game is how a stronger player, like, like in a handicap game, as, as, an, as a great example, um, you're going to be way far behind in a handicap game. But if you know your end game, then you can actually make up a lot of that, a lot of those points in end game. I think one of the books that I read, it may have actually just been this one, um, Get Strong at End Game, uh, it said that um, it's not about tricking your opponent in handicap games, it's about um, outplaying your opponent in the end game. And that's how you can win, and, that, and that's how you win the majority of the time. So I thought that was actually a, an interesting observation. Anyway, um, I really like this book, and I really recommend it for um, everyone to read. I think that, um, well, well, I think that the appropriate time is prob appropriate time to read this book is probably around five uh, Q to ten Q area. That's probably the appropriate time to read the book. But of course, this book is good enough uh, all the way up to the dawn level. There are some better down level books, but this book is the um, end game book that sort of covers everything to a good extent that you don't necessarily need the other books. And it's definitely a, a, a well laid out book, as I mentioned before. So I just want to mention this one more time before uh, I end before I end the video. Studying end game will not just make you stronger because you know end game and your opponent doesn't know end game that's one thing that'll help but the the side benefit that that setting end game will give you is more reading more powerful reading because end game is actually all about reading variations and technically you're supposed to read and calculate but it's all about reading variations so by studying end game your reading strength will get better and that will uh, improve your middle game strength. So that, that's just a, a great little side benefit. So even people who are actually just interested in the end game and have studied it before, if you haven't really studied it enough, um, it's still a good idea to go and study it just for the benefit to your reading ability. I definitely recommend you check it out. I like the Smart Go Books format, but it seems like the correct format to get this book would probably be as, as an actual book, which you should be able to do on the Kiseido website, and probably on Amazon. So yes, I think that's about it. So I hope you have a good day, and uh, see ya!